reunited and it feels so good. We'll talk about Anthony Macri back in the Macri Motorsports 39M, plus what's next for Lance DeWeese, tonight's High Limit Show, and more. Let's go. It's Tuesday, October 10th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. If you're new around here, we talk dirt racing five days a week. Uh, you can find the episodes on YouTube and all the major podcast platforms. We post new episodes Sundays through Thursday. Uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future shows. If you're curious who I am, I've worked around motorsports my entire professional career, including 16 seasons as a pit crew guy in NASCAR, plus a seven-year run as the web developer for the World of Outlaws and World Racer Group. And I've been around racing my entire life. I started going to race when I was two or three years old. I started Dirt Tracker in 2019 and this show in 2020. We are approaching 1,000 daily shows at this point. Uh, we're in the early 900s, 920, something like that. Also, if you're ever curious about something I've said on the show, I post full show transcripts to the website over at dirttracker.com slash daily. Those are also good if you or someone you know is hard of hearing and still wants to check out these shows. Uh, they get posted uh, right when new episodes drop each day. So if you want to read what I say instead of watch or listen to what I say, those are available as well. Uh, the big news uh, to item to drop yesterday was the confirmation that Anthony Macri will return to the Macri Motorsports 39M Sprint Car starting this weekend. It's probably one of the least surprising moves we've gotten this silly season. Well, I think on the flip side, Macri's original departure from the family team just hours before the Eldora Million back in July was one of the most surprising moves we've had in 2023. Basically just came out of nowhere. We even did an emergency daily show about it. Rumors about Macri's return had picked up in recent weeks, and there had supposedly been meetings and conversations uh, between Anthony and his father, Nick, who owns the team, about repairing their split. And Nick confirmed that to Jeremy Elliott, who broke the news yesterday at SprintCarUnlimited.com. Hopefully both sides have resolved their problems and they can move forward uh, here in a good place. Since Anthony decided to leave, neither he nor the team have really had the type of success that they'd come to be known for together. Anthony mentioned that he felt like he couldn't drive as aggressive in other cars, and it really showed in his performances. The 39M was being split uh, since Anthony left between Justin Sanders and Lance DeWeese. Sanders will actually drive it one more time tonight uh, with high limit at Lincoln Park. DeWeese picked up a pair of top five runs this past weekend at Port Royal against the Outlaws, including leading 18 laps on Saturday night. The last race with Anthony in the 39 uh, was a win at Port during PA Speed Week, but Anthony hasn't won since then, and the 39M had just a single victory. That was with Lance DeWeese at the Grove on September 22nd. I believe that was just a normal Williams Grove weekly show. Macri split time uh, in the meantime between the Clausen Marshall 7BC. That was as a fill-in for the injured Tyler Courtney, who was hurt during that Eldora Million weekend at Eldora. Uh, and with Bernie uh, also in the Indy race part 71. Macri's best finishes were two second place runs. He had one at the Grove and one at uh, Port driving the 71. Most recently, he was ninth at the Tusky 50, but they did not complete the outlaw portion of the weekend. Macri spun on the final lap of that Friday night b main and he was in a transfer spot, also collected Donnie shots in that one. But the team did not return for Saturday night. I think the larger issue here going forward for Macri was going to be where he was able to get a ride. Bernie's deal is great, but it's not really realistic. Uh, Bernie can't run a full-time 70 or 80 race schedule while also running his parts business. And without significant funding or a car owner who had some serious belief in Anthony, it was going to be tough here for him to find something somewhere else. Had Anthony continued to be super fast in other cars, his stock may have been strong enough to carry him. But away from the 39M, he was not the same driver. I'd heard rumblings that he probably put too much pressure on himself jumping into the All-Star title fight in the 7BC. That's not a position he's been in in his career before. And four races outside the top 10 in that stretch of appearances really put the 7BC behind the eight ball when Sunshine returned. Looking ahead, we'll see how long it takes Anthony to get his confidence back. The 39M team hasn't changed at all really since Anthony left. Joe Mooney's still at the helm, cars and engines still the same. Uh, Macri told Jeremy that winning a race this weekend isn't out of the question. Uh, we'll see if that comes to fruition. Uh, as a result of this move, Lance DeWeese was then uh, in need of a ride going forward, but his position already secure as of this morning. 
Uh, he told Jeremy Elliott that he's pairing up with Barry and Brent Shearer for the rest of the season, uh, probably a 40 race slate for 2024. The Shearer 12 has had both Brent and Billy Dietrich in it this season uh, in central Pennsylvania. And Brent ended up fourth last week at the Tusky 50 after starting on the uh, main event pole. Very impressive run there. Shearer will still drive some, including uh, at world finals here in a few weeks. And Deweese's experience uh, will be put to good use as he'll help them continue to build out that program and also sort their race cars. As long as the weather cooperates, DeWeese will be in the 12 starting this weekend. Uh, looking ahead to tonight, the first high limit season will wrap up with the finale at Lincoln Park Speedway in Indiana. No matter what Rico Abreu does, if Kyle Larson finishes in the top six, the championship is his. If that doesn't happen, uh, if Larson doesn't finish in the top six, it's really going to depend there on where each ends up in the feature. For Rico, I think the really thing, he, the only thing he can really do here is try, uh, try and win the race and then hope things fall his way. The entry list uh, released last night by High Limit has 36 cars on it right now, includes Tyler Courtney, uh, has last year's race winner and Buddy Kofoid. Uh, he's in the Roth Motorsports 83 Junior. Justin Peck will be there, Chase Randall, Brady Bacon, Logan Seavey, Zeb Wise, Kerry Matson, and a whole bunch more. Uh, tonight is a single division show, hot laps scheduled for 6 p.m. Uh, I think things should roll pretty quickly from there with 36 cars and uh, you know that being the only division racing. Uh, don't wait around uh, till 10 or 11 o'clock to watch this feature. It'll probably happen a lot earlier than that. If you can't get there, this one will stream live over on Flow. Uh, Super Dirt Week wrapped up yesterday at Oswego. Uh, three modified main events uh, were on the card. The first one of the day went to Matt Williamson in the 358 modified feature. He led a bunch of laps from the pole, uh, but had to battle Anthony Perego down the stretch to earn the victory. It was his first at Super Dirt Week in the 358. Perego and Mark Johnson rounded out the podium in that one. The Sportsman main event was dominated by Matt Janzik. Uh, he's been a regular at Super Dirt Week in recent years, uh, This was, uh, but this was his first win at the event. Uh, he was followed to the finish by 15-year-old pole sitter Nicholas Root and 11th starting Zach Sabatka. And then later in the day, Money Matt struck yet again in the Big Block 200 to become just the fourth driver in the event's history to win both the small block and big block features in the same event. It was also his third career win in the Super Dirt Week 200 lapper. After flipping on the first lap of the 358 race, Max McLaughlin bounced back to finish second with the big block. Uh, Mike Mahaney then went 13th to third. The big block competitors now have just a few days to get things ready as another big payday is coming up. The short track super series is headed for Port Royal and the speed showcase. That, that one pays 50 or $53,000 to win as well. We won't see the super dirt car series again until world finals at Charlotte in early November. Uh, that's it for the show today. Uh, make sure to hit up the streaming schedule at dirttracker.com. Uh, just a couple things on it today, the 24-7 stuff plus high limit. And you can follow Dirt Tracker across, uh, across all the major social media platforms at Dirt Tracker. That includes Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, you know, wherever you uh, are on social media, so is Dirt Tracker. I hope you guys have a great Tuesday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.